Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to game number two. So, Crystal Blanc, gonna be going first with them gear gears. So, both the players, side deck. So, let's see what our player has in store for the Dragon matchup. I think Goza Match is probably gonna be the card that is thrown up. And that card is absolutely gonna wreck Dragon. That card hurts so much. I think it's probably one of the best cards against Dragon. Other than Bandy's Emptiness. So, we see a Space Typhoon, and it's gonna hit a Call of the Haunted. Interesting choice. Uh, I'm trying to think. Is Call of the Haunted that great in Car Card Gear? Yeah, I, I personally do not know uh, how good that card can be. I know that like the deck can OTK. I feel like the card is a little bit slow. It requires a little bit setup. Uh, when the deck is pretty aggressive, I mean, it can play super super aggressive. So he's gonna go ahead and search out a water. Is he gonna search out a water, or uh, what is it? To send another water. Oh. Okay. So. So he's going to use extra deck. I think he's doing something to make it faster. Uh, oh, it's just one monster from your deck. Well, I don't know why I was thinking it had to be a water monster. Okay. So he's just going to uh, summon a monster. And then banish Tempest. And Tidal for a Redox. That's my guess. Because he's already used the effective title. So. What? Oh, right. He gets the search. <laughs> I was like, what's going on here? So, okay. So he's just going to go ahead and attack into that. And it'll die. And then he's going to be able to search out a card. Um, I felt like he. I mean, I don't know what his hand is. I felt like he might have had the potential. To be able to make um, a scrap dragon. I mean, I don't know what he could set, but uh, I, I like scrap dragon against that deck because, like, if they keep on setting, you can just kind of go one for one with them. And as long as they don't have back row, you'll just take advantage over them. And obviously, you're playing dragons, and you can overpower them real fast once you have the right opportunity to do so. So, you see a MK2 being summoned. Are we going to see a Vandy's Emptiness? Because th that has been the card that, you know, completely stops. Uh, our player in the red over here, but will our player be able to get the effect? I mean, there's no reason why he wouldn't get the effect of MK2, or at least try for it. So he's going to go for armor. Paul, do you have a response to that? That is the question. Because if you don't, nothing's probably going to happen this turn. Okay, yeah, like I said, there's nothing that's going to happen that turn. If you happen to have maybe um, the Call of the Haunted set, I don't know, maybe he would have been able to do something. Uh, he'd also need an accelerator. He can go for like gear getting an X and add one. I don't know. There, there's so many things that require me to see the uh, the player's hands. Like I've played uh, Karakuri Gyrgya. Um The deck is pretty good. I mean, OTK is really fast. That's really what it comes down to. And uh, it has a good matchup against a lot of stuff. Especially since you're not playing uh, Machina or Machina Fortress. Because uh, that card can get kind of problematic. Like, I like that card a lot, but sometimes it's just not that good of a card. Uh, simply because if you need to get over Ophion, sometimes you don't really have the option to do so. Because what are you going to make against Ophion? Like, Gem Knight Pearl? And if they have one back row, it's like, oh, you wasted two cards. So, let's see what Paul Cooper goes for. So, I guess he's going to uh, summon this. It feels like they're playing really slow. Like... I mean, they're they're probably thinking a lot. I mean, apparently a hundred dollars is on the line, but uh, I don't know if they were just talking smack. Uh, Six hundred people, it's insane. But if you guys have actually been to a Yu-Gi-Oh tournament, when you watch the top players play, it takes them a while to make their moves. I mean, there are certain decks where like the moves are just very cookie cutter. Like um, in any Exodia deck, like everything would be you know very cookie cutter. I'm just um, going to do that so I don't time myself out because <laughs> I hate that. <laughs> But, um, so he's going to go for level 8 Synchro. And Crimson Blader is still a pretty good card. Will he make it? That's the question. Or he's going to go for Stardust and make an even bigger push. No, he is going to be going for that Crimson Blader. Will we see something activated from Crystal Block over here in his back row? I, I expected to see Deep Prison at least in game 1. 
Uh, but perhaps you knew he was playing against uh, dragons, and I don't really like Deep Prison against dragons either. I don't think it's like the best card. I would much rather have things like Black Horn of Heaven. So Crimson Blader is going to attack over the Girgia armor, and then pretty much at that point, it only allows him to go for... I mean, he's going to be able to add Accelerator. That's my guess. Okay, he's going to go for Accelerator. He's probably going to make a play next turn, which he goes for a rank 4 monster. He might have to just go for a Diamond Direwolf and try to get rid of this, uh, because... In Karakur Yuria, this card hurts out hurts a lot more. And oh, he's gonna go ahead and activate Girgia Gear during the end phase. And he's gonna be able to summon two Girgana monsters. Um, there's only oh seven tools is activated in response to that, so Paul Cooper losing a thousand life points, but it is definitely gonna be worth it uh, to stop, you know, potentially a quick XYZ. So Chris LeBlanc basically has a play right now where he really needs to and he's in a bad position right now. If he can't get over this Crimson Blader or set back row to stop Crimson Blader from getting its effect off next turn, he basically is in a position where he's going to be taking a lot of damage very quickly. So let's see what he's doing. He's going to go ahead and go for Girgano. But remember, guys, he is not able to summon level 5 or higher monsters. So that really limits him on what he's able to do. He might just go for his end mains and go on the defensive side. Well, I guess he's going to be going on the aggressive side. Um, I... I don't know if that's the best idea, because I assume Paul Cooper plays more than one Crimson Blader. And obviously he's going to have to get rid of this. He's going to take some damage, but... Uh, okay. Unless... He's got no back row either. I don't think that that's the smartest move, uh, personally. Um, he might just not have a bad... He might just have like an awful hand, though. Um, is Paul Cooper maybe thinking? Okay, I was thinking maybe maybe he side decks D prison. I don't know. But like I said, I, I expect uh, the player in the blue to have at least two Crimson Blader. But yeah, he does definitely take some damage. Oh, I need to go roll that down. Okay. So I'm trying to think what what would I make to get rid of Zen Mains? I know for sure that Crimson Blader needs to be a card that I would make. But here's the thing. Unless he's making two Crimson Bladers on the first attack, he can allow the first attack to go through and just kill Zen Mains. But then he'll be taking 28 to the face. So either way, I think it's a win-win for Paul Cooper. If he's able to make a Crimson Blader and another card just to run over Zen Mains, it's, I mean, it's only got 1,500. It's, it's not too difficult. Um, but uh, that way you would you'd win like both ways. And Crystal Blanc would then be at like... Uh, well, depending on what monster he pulls out, he'll basically be at like less than half life points. Which just kind of sucks against dragons, because <laughs> dragons at any moment can just put on, you know, over 8,000 on board. So you have to really watch it. So a maxi is going to be activated, which is a fantastic uh, choice. Uh, I would I would definitely uh, activate maxi in this position if uh, I was in that position as well. But, uh, man. Okay, so he's going to be able to get one card. Um, and let's go ahead and oh, no, watch your chat. Watch, watch your language? What? what, what? People getting banned for cussing? I don't think that that was a rule when I, uh, on, the, on the admin test. I don't think it was. Uh, I, I, I remember one of the rules was that people couldn't actually type in capitals in the, uh, what's it called, the all chat, the public chat. You couldn't type in caps. Like, that would get you banned. Or it would give you, like, a warning. <laughs> maxi challenge? Uh, I, I mean, at this point, he, he could take the maxi challenge. Um... Which is a thing that you can do in Yu-Gi-Oh! And I really don't expect him to have a Trigodia. So, if you had the option to go for game, let me ask you guys this. Would you guys go for game? If I knew I had game, I would always go for it, um, playing against a deck like this. If it was playing against Chaos, never. I would never do it against Frog Monarchs either, because Battle Fader is always a card that they have. Um, I don't know if he plays Swift Scarecrow, he was playing Waboku, but Waboku has a lot of utility with a uh, Yuvia armor as well. So it looks like Paul Cooper is just going to end. Um, I would, oh, okay, I would say you, you could definitely attack over it, and, you know, depending on what these back rooms are. Like, if he has another Torrential, I would have attacked over it. Um, I don't know if Zemmings would pop the back row if it would pop this. I doubt it would pop this, but uh, we'll see. If it's a Torrential, then, uh, Paul Cooper should be good. Um, uh, I mean, that Torrential did come in kind of clutch there. Uh, getting rid of um, two uh, Karakuri, because they don't really play that many Karakuris. It's usually like three Karakuris. Um, occasionally you'll see someone play like up to five, but I've never seen really too many decks that play over five Karakuris. It's basically just like three or four. 
and he already used like half of them. And there's no more Pot of Adverse, which is probably one of the best cards uh, that the uh, Gyrgyz had. Now they have Pot of a Dichotomy, which they can't even use. I mean, there's Maxi, there's, uh, well, there's Insect, there's Machine. I think that's about it that you can really play in the deck. Like, every, everything is Machine in the deck. So, let's see what he's going to be able to make. Um, what rank forward? Okay. So you can add another Accelerator if he wants to, and then go for... Like, the problem is there's no, like, rank 4 that, like, runs over this too easily. I mean, there's, there's Cowboy, but then that card is kind of susceptible, and I don't think that'd be game. But we'll see. Oh, he's got Birdman. Never mind. This is... He's golden now. He's got this. He's got this. If he's able to pull it off. If he just needs another... Does he have another Accelerator? That's a real question. Okay. He's going to go ahead and send one of those to the graveyard. To Special Summit. A monster from his graveyard. So, he's, he, Paul Cooper's asking for his target because he might want to chain D.D. Crow? I don't think I'd put D.D. Crow against that deck. I, I, I don't think I would have sided D.D. Crow, but uh, we'll find out. He's going to target Accelerator. Will we see D.D. Crow, though? I, I honestly want to know that. Um, he might just chain like a Maxi or something like that. So he's going to go for Accelerator. And let's open up Watcher Check because... That's a little bit slow, like I said, guys. Like when these top players play, they have to think a lot, especially when there's things on the line. <laughs> Almost 700 viewers. That's 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 like the highest amount of viewers I think I've ever seen. So Paul Cooper says okay, and so like I said, guys, uh, Chris is pretty much good at this point um, because you know. All he really needed was one more summon, and then he can get another free summon. Now that he has Accelerator uh, in his hand, he can just go ahead and special summon it again, because he controls a Gear Gear Monster. Paul is thinking now, will we see a Torrential Tribute? Because if a Torrential Tribute is activated at this point, uh, it's going to be a huge advantage, obviously, for Paul Cooper. But the thing is, remember, Zen Mains will still stay alive, and also um, Gear 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 X will get the effect to special summon a monster. Okay, so he, he says that's good. Um... I personally would have said that that's fine too because he can't make a Sardis Dragon right now. I would wait for one more Synchro. Um, also, you'd probably want them to use all of their resources. Um, yeah, I don't know why Paul Cooper was thinking so long for that because like you can't make a Stardust, and that's the only reason why you'd want to think before you want a Torrential is can they make a Stardust? Because like there's like really no need. Will we see a Torrential activated right after this? That is the question. Um, he says, okay, so he's going to go ahead, and he's going to go for the dog, and he's going to probably go for Stardust. That's my guess right now. Uh, probably the Stardust. I can't think of anything else that he'd go for in this position. I think Stardust is probably the best card right now. And right now is the moment that you'd activate Torrential if you had it, I think, at least. I, I wouldn't wait any longer. The longer you wait, you're basically in a position where uh, you'd be asking to get Stardust. It's going to be Stardust. Calling it now, Stardust. But, I mean, it, it's the safest thing to go for. I mean, you don't know what both of those back rows are. Um, and obviously this has the effect that um, you can switch the battle position of this, so it's no problem at all. But I still think that he's going for Stardust, unless he's going to go for Scrap Dragon, perhaps, and, like, pop Zen Mains to pop something else. Um, which is an option, too. Like, that's, that's not a bad idea. Like, I still, I would, hands down, though, Stardust is probably the best card. Uh, but, you know... I don't have any. Oh, ooh, ooh! He he's going all. He's going in right here. I don't know if that's the best idea. Cause the thing is, I feel like Gyrgyz they can still lose to uh, things like Mirror Force as well. So he's gonna be able to get accelerators. No, 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 no! You don't get accelerate. Did he just say this just now? Because you don't get accelerators effect when it's sent to the graveyard. Um, when you synchro or when you well, obviously not material because it's not face up. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Yeah, yeah, I, see, see, guys? I, I, I told you that. Let, let me message Paul Cooper. Uh, oh, oh, okay, he's he's just kidding. I don't know. Oh, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> I guess they're just trolling. All right, if this Crimson Blitter attack goes through, Paul Cooper loses, pretty much. Like, very few things can come out. Uh, will we see Mirror Force? What was he thinking about? Was he just trolling? 
I don't know. You know how amazing Accelerator would be if it got its effect when you synchro it? That would probably be like so busted to make dragons look like a joke. Uh, Paul Cooper saying, if you have mirror force, you have to activate it. You have to stop the effect of Crimson Blader. Like, there's no reason you'll allow Crimson Blader's attack to completely go through. Um, <laughs> I, I, I don't think with that many watchers he could pull it off. So I think I think he was joking. But uh, perhaps if they were playing serious, like, sometimes you get so caught up in the game, you forget. Um, Crystal Blanc, please call him on slow playing. Uh... <laughs> oh, oh! See, I told I I told you guys, I told you guys that he should have made Stardust. <laughs> Who said he should have made Stardust? <laughs> Ouch! <laughs> well, at least he gets Gear Gigant's effect, right? At least he gets that. <laughs> oh, he he was playing a little bit. He he was trying to go for a little bit more of a risky uh, play. Unfortunately, it didn't work out too well for him, but hey, part of Yu-Gi-Oh, right? <laughs> Paul Cooper's, he, he needs to be in the Yu-Gi-Oh TV show, because um, he goes, I know, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'm like, I will spend that $100. Oh, and Paul Cooper, why are you so cool? Like, <laughs> that's hilarious. Um, but um, now Zemmings is going to go defense mode. Uh, there's no reason why Zemmings won't pop this, because this returns to the hand anyway. So yeah, he's going to pop that. And, uh, oh, is he going to chain it and put accelerator? Oh, he's putting that back row back to the top. Yeah, I, that's the best move. <laughs> and then at this point, uh, Paul Cooper is pretty much top decking, but uh, let's be honest, top decking of dragons is like, no worries, bro. This is your extra hand. This is like, you still have, what does he have? He has at least, I think, five monsters? Because I know one of them is Mirror Force. No, no, one of them is MST, one of them is Mirror Force. Uh, one of them is Phoenix Wing Wind Blast. I'm trying to remember everything. Uh, that is one way you can get better at Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, memorizing every card in the graveyard without saying, Can I see your graveyard? Because that means that you're gonna, like, go for a play. Ah. Uh, yeah, Crystal Blanc, I'm sorry, man. You just played a little bit too aggressive. But even if he went for, let's say, the, uh, the Stardust, he could have got that Stardust Phoenix Wing Wind Blast, and then he would have got Mirror Force anyways. It still would have been a safer move, though, because, um... Obviously, he would just use Phoenix Boom Wind Blast. He would uh, have to. I mean, I'm pretty sure he would still attack. And then Zenmains would have to destroy itself. So it would have been probably better for Paul Cooper had he actually went for Stardust earlier. Now that I'm thinking about it. Because then Zenmains would actually have to target one of these. <laughs> or his own card. Because the other guy would have. Uh, Paul Cooper would have had nothing on the field. If he went Phoenix Boom Wind Blast when they attack. Mirror Forced. Um, oh, never mind. Tidal would have been there. Tidal would have been there, and he would have destroyed Tidal. My bad. Never mind. Doesn't matter. I mean, I, I'm pretty sure we kind of expected dragons to win, but I was rooting for you, Crystal Bonk, just because it wasn't dragons. And I don't have like this hatred towards dragons. I just love to root for the underdog decks to win. Um, you know, it's just part of. I, I've always been a fan of like the underdog decks, <laughs> um, unless it's. Um, I don't know, something, oh, what is something like, I don't know, Ice Bears, because that's an underdog deck that I'd I, I never want to win. <laughs> because it's so painful how, like, bad they designed that deck. Like, nothing works in that deck. I've tried. <laughs> that's part of the reason why I dislike them so much, because when they came out, I was like, oh, that sounds kind of cool, let's make an Ice Barrier deck. I wasted all my time, and I was still kind of new to the game, I think, what was that, Hidden Arsenal 2? I don't know. But uh, I wasn't, like, you know, the most familiar with the game. And I, I traded all the cards before I even playtested it, and then I playtested it, and I'm like, this deck sucks. <laughs> but, yeah, that is crazy. Um, how many viewers, how many people do we have on Dueling Network? We only have 5,000. We almost have, like, one-fifth of the people on Dueling Network in this game right here. And we're going to see a Scrap Dragon made. And I personally think the best card in this position would have still been to make from Well, maybe he ran out of Crimson Bladers. That is definitely... A possibility and we already know that crystal monk will be top decking a spell or trap what spell or trap it is i have no idea unless crystal monk somehow cheats and he top decks like another monster <laughs> top deck uh kakari bury oh no he can't. yeah top deck a synchro uh top deck uh that uh what's that shred just like move it to defense mode and then sync her up oh oh but he still has redox okay i guess we can't count him completely out now he can still go for redox 
and just play on the defensive side, and he's probably going to set the back row. I, I really want to know what the heck that back row is. Is MSC going to be activated? He's checking out the graveyard. I would, if I have an MSC, see, I would have activated then there. Um, I don't think Chris LeBlanc would be playing, like, Return, but it could still be Gear Gear Gear, which is a really great trainable anyways, and I wouldn't want to risk uh, running into that card, because that is one card I think that if Chris LeBlanc can draw, it'll put him right back in the game. Um, you know, he just needs to, he's going to activate the effect of Scrab Rank. But yeah, I mean, if, if Chris LeBlanc can make a Crimson Blader, uh, another one, and successfully attack over it, it'll be good. So he's going to go for Scrap's Dragon's Effect. And Chris is okay. Ooh, and he's going to be able to hit that. But is it a gear, gear, gear? And it's not. Okay. Uh, ouch. I'm sorry, Chris LeBlanc. But uh, at this point, it's not looking too good for you. Because the problem is he can't top deck Avarice. It's just that, uh, unfortunately... Uh, kill me, please. I can't stand to take this. <laughs> I, I guess... I don't know if he's given up yet. I mean, they are playing for 100 bucks here. I, I would play... To the last moment if I was playing for money. I, you never know. I, I've seen some players come out of stuff that they really shouldn't have come out of, but uh, we'll see. Alright, let's go with the washer shot because I'm pretty sure this game is basically over. <laughs> we need... Oh man, the... I'm going to post this on the channel. What a noob. Uh... Oh, wait, I have response. Wait, wait, what? Okay. I think Crystal Blanc at this point is just messing around. But, um, yeah, unfortunately, there's 15 more watchers, please. Is this rated? No, this is unrated. 9 watchers. What? We almost have 800. Oh, he probably meant 9 more watchers to get 800. Uh, yeah, your response is paying from my hundred. <laughs> Why is he so funny? So let's just see how he finishes it off because uh, I really want to know how this is going to end. I, unless they're playing best of five. LeBlanc's just the hype. I don't know. The deck is pretty linear, but it does have some plays where it does require you to think. The more Birdman you play and the more TG Strikers you play in a deck, the the more I feel like the deck takes a lot more thought process. Uh, he's going to be able to add uh, that card, though. Um, okay, so let's see if he can come out of this somehow. <laughs> Have fun, good luck. So, he's going to go ahead and synchro up for... What, what is he going to make here? Stardust? Like, because Dark Hole is not even, like, a top deckable card right now at this point. Oh, okay, he's going to go for that. Okay, that works. I think this card plus uh, Vanny's Emptiness is a really dirty play. Um, but let's see if Crystal Blanc can come out of this. Uh, I, I, I'm really hoping that he can somehow pull, pull it off. Um, I'm trying to think, what, what could he possibly pull off? Black Rose. Black Rose won't even be good. Alright, so he's going to go for Burray. Burray can then spot summon the dog. But then, now what? Like, I'm trying to... Oh, Redox! Ooh, ooh, ooh! Big guy, big guy, big guy. Oh, man. Maybe, maybe, he's, maybe he wasn't joking when he says he's winning. Like, that was that's legit. If he can pull it off... Man, so, many, so much props to him. Um... Oh, Chris messed up. He's, he was probably meant to move something to defense mode before. Perhaps? I don't know. Um, big guy? Uh, I will let you take that back. Um, I'm trying to think of what the best card to make is. Uh, yeah, that is true. Chris LeBlanc never really made anything. He, I think he sent him to the graveyard when he meant to XYZ with him. Um, but I'm trying to think of what he's going to make. Like, ah, uh, what's the best card to make? Draco's hack's not even, like, good in this position. Um, it, it can't be destroyed by battle or by card effects, right? 
he's going to make Scrap Dragon go to defense mode. <laughs> There's a new pair of drawers. <laughs> well, I'm Paul so, so truly, I love it. All right. And getting the Crystal Bug, show me your plays, please. This duel is getting way too long for, uh, you know, dra dragons to be matching up against Cat Creek. So both these decks can pull off uh, some pretty fast, um, you know, game finishers. But the problem is, he's going to be taking... Oh. What? Why, why is he... Oh, he's going to go for a level... Seven. Okay. Oh, snap. Oh, snap. I like where this is going. Man, this is this is some next level stuff. I would have never thought of that. I, straight up, this is... This is this is the highest level of play right here. I can't believe I I forgot that uh, you know you can see her with the tokens. So he's gonna be able to go for a nice level six. What, what is that? The beast god Vulcan? I don't know. He's also going to move that to defense mode. <laughs> yes, move all of them to defense mode. Oh, this is so cool. This is so cool. Um, what is what is he gonna make? Oh, okay. So he's. Probably gonna activate the effect of Start a Spark Dragon. Yeah. Okay. I, I like how he was able to pull that off. Like, that is so cool. If he only had, like, Birdman or something, he probably could have done something even cooler. But, um, uh, I guess Paul Cooper's thinking right now. If he wants to protect, uh, Scrap Dragon. Or Start a Spark Dragon. Um, for me, I think I'd probably protect, uh, I'd probably protect Scrap Dragon, to be honest. I mean, it only has, like, a once per turn thing anyways. So he, he can, either way, I, I would probably kill Scrap Dragon. I think that's the best thing to get rid of, because what does Stardust Spark Dragon have to do with, like, anything right now? And that card is, like, irrelevant to the game. Uh, I still think it's... No, I don't. Stardust, regular Stardust Dragon wouldn't have been, like, any better, so to say. <laughs> Hurry, it's almost... <laughs> Alright, so... At this point, I think, uh, I need to type in the, uh... Oh, that's, that's in private chat. Let's go what? Oh, no. no. Wrong, wrong chat. We want to go to this one. Alright, um, Aladdin. <laughs> Chris is 16, calm down. Who is Paul Cooper? He's Paul Cooper. <laughs> this is the new public chat. I'm just typing in a dot that way I don't I don't get disconnected. Um Rebecca Blank. What is that? <laughs> uh, there are my friends listed apparently. Anyways. Um So let's see if Paul Cooper can come out of this. Um depending on what that back row can be, like if it's advantage emptiness, man, no joke, I think he can come back, <laughs> like, which is awesome. I love seeing these crazy comebacks that should technically never happen. So, he's going to send to the graveyard. Alright. I wish this was, like, once per turn during either player's turn, but I think that might actually be a little bit broken. <laughs> like, could you imagine it? Oh, you want to attack me? No. <laughs> so he's going to send a blaster to the graveyard. And then, I'm trying to think of what he wants to make. Like, I feel like he wants to make a Crimson Blader. Okay, so he's going to banish a Crimson Blader. And a Flammable Card just first Summon Blaster. Chris LeBlanc is thinking. I feel like that's a, that, that means it's a bottomless, because, like, why would you think about a Torrential? That'd be, like, the worst idea ever. I don't think, uh... I don't think it, like, even if it's bottomless, this card protects it. So, I'm not even sure if it's worth it to, um, even try to use bottomless against that. I mean, it'll, it'll force him to use his Stardust Spark Dragon's effect, but, like, there's no need to get rid of Stardust Spark Dragon's effect. Man, this duel is... A little bit long, but you know it is between two YC champions, so it's it, it's a good game. And I would say this game too has been like fantastic. I mean, both players are really utilizing a lot of their talent here. Um, I would say Crystal Blanc had that play where I, I would have never thought of that. They go for the Draco Sack to get the tokens, 
and then get out more stuff. That that was cool. Like mad props to him for that play. It's probably like such an easy play. You guys are like wow, Adrian Eyes Water Scrub. It's such an easy play. Hey, I wouldn't have thought of that. Uh, but uh, let's see what he actually pulls out because he might go for like some like big eye. Then at that point, oh well. But this card can protect big eye anyways. I don't I don't think this card matters. Uh, unless it's like Solemn Warning, like that, that could be a card that can make the difference between winning and losing. Goes and match. Ooh. Kinda sucks for- wait, wait, is it- they, it, it doesn't destroy, it just sends them to the graveyard. So, Star Spark Dragon does absolutely nothing against that, so... Goes and match is OP. So, I, 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 I think, guys, we might see game three, because this card makes it so, like, of what, what, what would you do at this position? Just call Blaster, then Blaster would like go back to the hand later. So, uh, Crystal Blanc is thinking what he wants to keep on board, um, and I believe it's it's this also Wind, right? So, I might keep the Draco sack if I was in his position. I mean, this this allows more options to like still play your deck. So he's gonna keep he's gonna keep Blaster. I think you. Uh, let's see. Yeah, he's gonna keep he's gonna keep this. Cause I, I I would see no reason why not to uh, keep it. Alright. So man, that puts Paul Cooper in a really bad spot too. Yeah. Okay, so he's gonna kill a token. And then pretty much <laughs> We know that's not an MST. If it was an MST, he would have changed it to Goes and Match and then continued off with his play. I'm trying to think of what could be faced down. Is it a Vandy's Emptiness, though? Because then uh, both players are pretty much at like a stalemate at that point. Um, if I was Chris LeBlanc, I would probably pop a token and pop the uh, uh, either Ravine, because you got to stop them from getting that advantage, or pop this. Let's do Oh, he's going for the backer. Okay. Oh, Catastrophe. Oh, that card's pretty legit. I like that card. Um, but he's not gonna be able to attack this turn, but that's fine, because he actually just returns to the hand anyways. And he's gonna set a card. Now, I'm I'm not sure if you can even flip up the face mo the monster, like, face up, and then just send a different one. I'm not positive on that, guys. Sorry about that. Asian Knight is so bad at rulings, right? But, um, uh, let's see what he actually is able to do, because uh, Goes and Matt shuts down a lot of the aspects of the game. Like, 2600 is a lot for Dragons to deal with, uh, like, if they can't you know, Synchro, or XYZ, it, it really hurts. Ah, I'm trying to think, what, what would be a good thing to make? I mean, I don't know what he has in his hand, I mean, it, it might be as simple as go for Black Rose, if he's able to somehow... No, I don't think you can make Black Rose, like, with Goes and Match on the field. I'm trying to think if there's a way to make it, but I really don't think there is. You'd have to use... Trigun... A little four fire that they would that they would actually play in here. I, I can't think of any. I mean, maybe at one point, Lone Fire plus Trigun plus yeah, Lone Fire Trigun uh, and uh, what's that card called? The level one tuner that's Flamvel Guard. That they, they can make Black Rose. Okay, so maybe maybe, but that that's that's. It's pretty conditional, but that would definitely be an option. But, um... Yeah, I can't think of anything to do in this position. I'd get rid of this. Or you just go for the attack and hope it's... I don't think he'd have D prison. I mean, we saw Mirror Force before, but Mirror Force won't affect him. I think his safest bet is to just go for the attack. Okay, that's a good move. I think I would do that as well. And then he can just end his turn. I still can't believe LeBlanc came back from that. So that was clutch by LeBlanc. And I think that was... I still can't get over that move. It makes me want to start playing uh, Karakuri now. Uh, Karakuri, well, or just mocking Gear Gear. I loved Gear Gears, but the deck got a little bit too repetitive. Oh, there's the Ravine. There's the Ravine. But the thing is, you're going to have to discard a card. So that basically means no more Blaster effect. At least not this turn. Because he's used... Oh, man. I wasn't keeping track of the blasters. Usually when I play against dr dragons, um, I try to remember how many uh, blasters that they've gone through. 
Because once they've gone through like three blasters or even two blasters sometimes and they've already used like their other fire target, you don't have to worry about a, an effect of blaster again. That that can be very important. Um, Ravine is looking nice. Yeah, Ravine is, is pretty nice. Um, I mean, you can tack over the token, but and protect yourself from one turn, but that's a temporary like thing that you're doing. Yeah, and of course you have to kill the token. There's no reason to inflict 200 points of damage. All right. Come on. <laughs> Come on, you can end. Okay, there we go. I almost want to cut this into two parts, but I mean, nothing has really happened. It's just a very long duel. Got a lot of thought press. Almost, almost 900 watchers. <laughs> oh, so he's going to go ahead and pop the back row. Ooh, he's going to chain MST, and of course, he's going to hit the... Yeah, that sucks. All right, Paul Cooper looking pretty good in this game right now. Uh, but remember, our other player uh, in the red right now, he's probably got a face down armor. He's got the effect of MK2 right now. But he's kind of exhausted his Karakuri plays. But uh, we'll see what he's gonna be able to actually put out. Cause I still think that he's, he's gonna be able to make a pretty threatening field, if not just make a game right here. Paul Cooper made a defeat, so Crystal Blanc takes game two. What an amazing game two. But we're going to be right back with game three once they finish side decking. But thanks for watching, guys. Asian Ice out.